All right, welcome back to SF Vortex. We have made it down to the war room, and look who's joining me today, folks. John Copeland is here, producer from my other favorite space station, Babylon 5. Mr. Copeland, thanks for taking the time from those telefilms. How are they going, sure. by the way? Uh, they're going great. We're uh, in the second day of our uh, first telefilm that we're doing for TNT, and we're doing some very challenging and uh, pushing the envelope things on both of these films that okay. I think the fans are going to be really glad to, uh, to see. Right. Okay, and also joining me, folks, Mr. Ed Solomon, screenwriter of this summer's huge blockbuster, Men in Black, and co-writer <laughs> of Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure. Ed also co-wrote the book Men in Black, the script, and the story behind the film. And let's face it, folks, my other guest needs no introduction. He is the one, the only, the legendary Stan Lee, creator of Spider-Man and many other classic Marvel comics. Welcome, gentlemen. Thank As you. As we approach the big summer blockbuster season, I got, I got to ask you my first question. Just because you spend a lot of money, Ed Solomon, writer of Men in Black, does yeah. it ensure you're going to have a great movie? Well, it costs me a lot of money, but I think yes. I think the more you spend the better the film. No, absolutely not. I mean, no audience cares how much uh, money is actually spent on a film. They, you know, I think they want a good story. As you as a writer, when you go to see a science fiction movie in the movie theater, mm -hmm. what do you go to see? Do you go to see the, the great special effects because it's entertaining, or you, because you're a writer, you want to see a good story, you want to see the character development? I think people have come to expect uh, from some of the movies, that some of the huge films, the quote event films, mm -hmm. They've come to actually not expect story anymore, which is, I think, kind of disappointing. So they go in and say, it was a great ride, meaning there were just tons of fabulous things and the theater shook from the great sound system. I mean, that's not my strength as a writer to create, you know, great effects or whatnot. Right. Okay. Uh, I just go to, to enjoy, the, I think, the intention. If, they, if the intention of the film worked out, if the intention was to make a, a big, great, big roller coaster ride and I pay money to go see it, I want a big roller coaster ride. The John Copeland, do you want the big roller coaster ride? Well, I think that the the, the roller coaster ride can be uh, a fun time waster on a, on a hot summer day. But I, you know, I agree with Bill that uh, some of these great event films are really that the characters are becoming almost like icons for characters. And and to me, it seems like this is something that has happened from all of the computer games that uh, are out there. People are are used to playing through icons and seeing experiences, and the experience becomes just as entertaining as a compelling story. Um, I still don't think that that is any substitute for a great story with great characters mm -hmm. and, and something that really grabs you and involves you in what's happening with them so that you care about them. Stan Lee, our well, resident legend, what do you think? <laughs> of course, um, there's no substitute for anything. The, the, to me, the important thing is do you enjoy it? If it's a special effects movie and the special effects are well done, Fifth Element, great. for example? Is oh, that... sure. It's wonderful. I enjoyed looking at it. And in fact, I'll see it one of these days. <laughs> but I, I felt that was the, the right answer to give you. Or if it's a movie like Rain Man and no special effects, but man, you get into it. You know, I mean, a real story movie, they're both good. There's a place for both of them. It's like you like ice cream or chocolate. I'm a glutton. I like them both. Right. So, Ed Solomon, when you go to a movie and there's a lot of special effects, is that kind of like a smoke? Screen, a smoke screen as far as, the, the, like I said before, the, the character development, the story. Because I'm just going to enjoy it and have a nice ride, like you put it, have a nice ride and just join the cast and go on this whole uh, adventure. with. Well, the rest I of think it's all about storytelling. I mean, if you tell the story, directing is storytelling. Special effects are storytelling. It's all adding to the story. You know, what okay. helps the story? I don't think an audience goes to a film saying, is this worth $200 million? I mean, they go say, is this worth $750, you know, or two bucks, you know? Mm -hmm. and. Uh, uh, I don't, uh, by any means, pay attention to you know what it costs or not. But it's funny, even though you say the audience doesn't go there saying that, and I'm sure they don't. People have become so wrapped up in the cost of movies and because the, the media the keeps throwing it right. at them. I mean, I guarantee when Titanic finally opens up, the first comment any member of the audience is going to make is going to be, "Well, I didn't think it was worth 200 million," or, "Man, I don't know how we did it that cheap." But it, it'll right. be the money they talk about. Absolutely. Well, if there's been so much buzz about it with the with the Titanic yeah. watch. It'll have a huge open, regardless of of what the final costs are or not. Whether it's got the legs to oh, uh, right. to continue with that because of the of the story, or ultimately whether, as as Stan said, whether it's entertaining. It's you know a a, a show like. Jurassic Park, which you know had wonderful effects, moved along like a roller coaster, mm -hmm. as Roger said, some of the some of the big event movies do. It was still entertaining, but as far as a story, it was not a great story. Similarly, was, and sorry to interrupt you. It's quite all right. No, um, you're not. As my <laughs> counterpart, <laughs> Bill, I tend to interrupt. Um, 
similarly, a lot of real pieces of crap, if I may say so, get uh, critics uh, loving them because they were made in inexpensively. Right. And you see all these films that if you know they were actually made for $20 million, you'd go, it stinks. But because some lame hack goes out and makes a movie with his, some 16 millimeter camera, and it only costs mm -hmm. $30,000 or $400,000, people think it's really good. John Copeland, do you think a movie like Waterworld, for example, it really, I'm going to go on record as saying the movie wasn't that bad. If, but if there wasn't so much press about how much a movie, the, the critics couldn't wait to pan it. Well, you know, it's, I, it was not that bad. But, uh, you know, at the same time, I felt like uh, it was a little bit like a, a Chinese dinner. I mean, I was kind of like over it before I was out of the theater. I felt like there was something missing. I did not get really wrapped up in the life or death struggle that was going on. Right. Okay. All um, right. We you know, well, I'm sorry to interrupt you there, John, but i got to take a break. Don't go anywhere, folks. When we come back, there is much more in the war room when SF Vortex continues. See you in a minute. Welcome back to SF Vortex. We are still in the war room with the very cheerful Mr. John Copeland, producer of Babylon 5, and Ed Solomon is still here, screenwriter of Men in Black, and the creator of Spider-Man, the one, the only, Mr. Stan Lee. All right, guys. You did it right. Before, before we go on any further, why don't we all take a quick look at the very much anticipated blockbuster of the summer, Ed, Men in Black. Gotta see. We are the Men in Black. You know what the difference is between you and me? I make this look good. Dad, we have a bug. I knew it. This is an alien, and you guys are from some government agency trying to keep it under wraps. No. Okay. I'm gonna count to three. He'll do it, Jeeves. One. I'm telling you, that man does not look stable. Two. He's always crazy. Why don't you get a massage or take a cruise? Three. Do you have any idea how much that stings? Wow, I cry every time I see that. You sure yeah. write good explosions. That That's very is cool. terrific stuff. Now, when you're writing a movie like mm -hmm. Men in Black, are you writing, when you're writing, are you, are you thinking specifically a, uh, the actor, or do you let the character dictate which way you're going to go? Uh, normally the character. You just write. And then when, of course, you get an actor assigned to the movie, someone comes on, you then start to shift. But that's all if you're lucky enough to get into production. And any truth to the rumor that when you were writing, you were thinking of me, couldn't get me, so you went with Will Smith? Is that what happened? I think of you when I procrastinate. Okay. Now, <laughs> Stanley, do you think... I thought you were going to say he's bigger, thinking of me. Let me ask you. Bigger, bigger the special effects, less so worried about the character? Well, it's a, it's a practical thing. The more money they spend on special effects, mm -hmm. the less money there is in the budget to pay for high-salaried stars. Right. Sometimes you have a, a movie that's a high enough budget, you can get them both. I think the audience doesn't care that much. If it's a movie they want to see, if it's an event-type movie, then mm -hmm. they go to see it, like Twister or Independence Day. Mm -hmm. But if it's the type of thing that it's the sort of plot they've seen before, then it better be some actors they want to see. John Copeland, is it like that in television as well? Well, I think that, that the effects and, the, si and the, the stature of your cast are mm -hmm. independent of each other. I think that it's what the story is, the entire, the entire piece. There certainly have been a number of television series that have started out with unknowns. I mean, look at X-Files. Who knew, who, knew who David Duchovny was or right. uh, Jillian Armstrong? Exactly, they, who knew? Uh, the same with uh, movies such as Twister, Independence Day, they had big effects, they didn't have such big stars, but, you know, it's, it's really just up to what the, what the script calls for. I think, you know, cinema is still a fairly new medium, so Star Wars comes out and people suddenly go from watching great films without effects to watching films with huge effects, and suddenly people start to experiment. What can we do? What can, and now, of course, with computer animation, computer graphics, you know, it I don't think anybody is going to care who's in Star Wars. They're going to just want to see, you know, the new three ones that he's doing. Uh -huh. They're just going to want to see those effects. I don't think anybody really cares who's in the sequel to Jurassic Park. They're going to want to see those dinosaurs. And luckily, they don't have to pay the dinosaurs too much. <laughs> exactly. <That's laughs> you know what time it is, guys? It's time to go to a viewer letter. Let's get to it. Bill Beckman thinks, as a research scientist, I find that when a problem arises, it is best solved with innovation and ingenuity rather than just throwing money at it. 
Voyager's budget is much higher than Babylon 5's, but B5 is a far better show. John Copeland, I know you wouldn't disagree with that. No, not at all. But what's the difference? <laughs> what is the difference? Well, I think that, that given our, uh, our sort of like our economic challenge on Babylon 5, we've had to look at telling the story and doing our production in a slightly different way than has been, has been done in the past. We have to look for innovative uh, ways of achieving things. Uh, we certainly are not tied to limits of what we can do. The technology that we bring to bear in telling our stories, uh, we found that in the last four seasons that we're really only limited by our imaginations. I love the work you do with shadow puppets and uh, finger puppets and stuff. <laughs> uh, you know, you've, you've noticed that. Oh yeah, it's, it saves uh, a lot of money and it's, it's excellent. It certainly does. And I got they're cheap. Mm -hmm. I got time for one more question, Stan Lee. What is happening over there at Marvel Comics? What can we look forward to? Well, the one thing I'll mention, because Ed is involved in it, is we're, among other movies, we're mm -hmm. doing the X-Men. And uh, Mr. Solomon is writing the script. In fact, he should be home writing it now. I'm yeah, going to give him help here? for Get being here tonight. <laughs> you know, you didn't check with me first. <laughs> but it's pretty exciting. It's going to be a big movie. It's going to have big name stars, probably. It's going to have a big budget. It's going to have a lot of surprise uh, special effects. Great director, Brian Singer. Yeah, and a script wow. by Ed. And it's great to work with Stan. Is I mean, really? as curmudgeonly as he can be. <laughs> right. uh, it is nice still Do you want to give us them. any little hints, Ed? You're sitting home writing it. Give us a little hint out there what we can look forward to. Come on. Uh... Don't. Thanks for that insight, Ed Solomon. <laughs> there you have it, folks. I got to get out of here. Mr. Colvin, before we leave, best of luck. <laughs> we hope you're back for that fifth season. So Don't do go anywhere, folks. There's much more here in the Vortex when we come back.